welcome back to the Box of Lies game channel. We're playing Arkham Horror. Jacqueline Fine is going to kick things off in the upkeep phase, and she's one clue short of enough to um, seal a gate. So we're going to head her off to, I think, Westerly Farm, if we can deal with this witch that's sitting here. So a speed of three, I think we'll keep her. We're not going to sneak by this thing, are we? Let's move her fight. Let's move her fight up to four, and her law up to four. As for Pete, well he's stuck here at the witch house, he's got this cho-cho to face. His speed is currently zero, so he needs to go get out of here, start hunting some clues down I guess. For this turn I think Pete's going to stay where he is, but let's start pushing his speed up a little bit because he's only got a focus of one, which isn't very helpful. Movement then, well Jacqueline. She's not going to bother doing anything other than just running down here and fighting this witch. So we're going to end our movement there. Let's take a look at this witch. She has magical resistance. We're not going to suffer any sanity damage from a horror check, so there's no point actually rolling for that horror check. But she's quite tough to fight. We haven't got any weapons, but we do have a fight of four, and that witch has a combat rating of minus three. There's only one die that we're going to roll, but we only need one hit, we only need one success. Goodness, what can we do though, eh? So we're looking for one success from one die. Yeah, minus three. Okay. Alright, a six. It's about time we had a little bit of luck. So let's take this as a trophy. All I can say to you is, don't try that at home. I think a lot of folks will say you shouldn't take those sorts of chances, but I'd say why not? That's gaming. You've got to roll the dice. Pete now, and he's going to end his movement here. And what can we do about it? I really don't think Pete's in a position to try and beat this thing, so let's try and evade once more. Remember Pete only has a sneak of five now. So that's three dice to try and evade this thing. Come on. Yes, we got two successes. So we successfully evade this Chocho once more. Jackie being up here in a street area will not have an encounter, but Pete will at the witch house. So we'll give these a quick shuffle and draw one at random. There we go. What do we get? You're overcome by the echoing chants of a long gone witches who have lived and died here. You pass out. Make a will minus two check. So poor old Pete's passed out and with a will of two 2 minus 2 is 0, and no clues to spend. That's a failed skill check. If you fail, you're missing half your items when you wake up. Discard half your items, your choice. Round it down. Well, we pass out and lose half of, half of nothing, so uh, <laughs> poor old Pete doesn't really have much to, to steal. All right. So let's move right on to the mythos phase. Big Storm Sweets Arkham. So we get... Oh no. Another monster surge. Because we've got a gate already. A plateau of the lane. As for the monster surge, well... We've already hit our monster limit of five, so... These five monsters, because there's five gates open, are all going to go to the outskirts. Right, clue appears at the unnamed law. That's okay. Monster movement now. We've got pluses going black and ooh, moon's white. That's all our servants on the march. And also our chochos. So we've got quite a lot of movement going on here. Let's start down the bottom. This one's going to head over here. These two at the graveyard are going to move into the Rivertown streets. 
this servant of Glucky in downtown. It's going to head on to East Town. And we've got two more. This one here and this one here. Now we get the big storm and this might just give us a little bit of breathing space which we seriously need. All monsters in the sky and the outskirts are returned to the cup. Well, let's breathe a little sigh of relief. The Migo goes back to the cup. One more monster can come to Arkham now. And these six, they're going back to the cup as well. Outskirts are empty. All right, we really needed that one. I think that's everything. First player token moves to Ashcan Pete. He's in the witch house and he's trapped in there by this chocho that's sitting in French Hill streets. We're after some clues, he hasn't got any. But my speed is really low here, so for my focus I'm going to put my speed up to 2, sneak 4. As for Jacqueline, well she's up here in Dunwich and she's got quite a few options. She's got three clues, some research materials and some clues around her. So she's just going to go and pick up a clue. Without the need for any speed, I'm going to push her sneak up to 2. Movement now, and Pete would like to sneak around here to the Silver Twilight Lodge and grab that clue. We've got this Chocho in the way which has a minus two awareness, and we've got a sneak of four. So we need to do an evade check with two dice to sneak around this guy. Push me up. One success. So Pete can continue his movement down to Silver Twilight Lodge and grab that clue. He's been pretty sneaky all game, really. Not had to get involved in too much fighting. And Jacqueline up here, we're going to have her move. I think that one looks pretty horrible, doesn't it? Or the farm. Let's go to the farm. Grab that clue. That puts Jacqueline's tally up to four clues. Good stuff. Pete starts now with the encounter phase. Silver Twilight Lodge. So we're going to draw an encounter card. We might get something good. Let's pull one at random. This one. And we get... You hear the quiet sounds of an intruder. If you investigate, you find a woman dressed in black. She attacks you as soon as she sees you, pass the fight minus one check. To subdue her long enough to explain your investigation. Alright, let's do that. So fight minus one check. This might be good because Pete's fight is currently five. Let's take four dice. Right, plenty of successes, four successes. So we pass and search for Ruby Standish. Take her ally card. If not available, she gives you a unique item instead. Do we have a Ruby Standish? Or did I see her disappear already? No, we don't. So we're going to get a unique item instead. Give these a shuffle back up. Shuffle that one back in here, and we get to pick a unique item. Now, remember Pete's scrounging ability, which says that Pete may look at the bottom card of those decks any time and draw from the bottom or the top on the unique item deck. What did I put on the bottom? I think it was the jewellery. I'm going to draw from the top instead, I think just in case there's like an elder sign or something like that. A knife, plus three to combat checks, and it's a magical weapon. Well, that looks pretty cool. It's about time Pete had a weapon. Excellent. Now, Jacqueline here at Whiteley Farm, which is in the backwards country neighborhood. He's already shuffled, so what do we get? If you pass a luck minus one check, you discover some of Wizard Watley's notes. You may remove one ditch. 
Well, that's not much help to us, is it? There aren't any damage horror tokens on the board. As it goes, Jacqueline had a luck of two, so we would have rolled one die. But nothing's going to happen either way. So we'll head straight into the mythos phase. Picnickers panic. And we have a gate opening at the unvisited aisle. The problem, though, is this. Because we've got a seven of Glarky here, and if he follows that white arrow into this vortex, then the terror level's going to go up. And that will bring out our last seven of Glarky, and Glarky will awaken. So I'm going to have to use Jacqueline's ability to discard this one and, and pull another one and hope we don't get another moon. Okay, what do we get? Phew, we do, but it's a good one. It's icy conditions. So we've got a gate opening at the Historical Society. Let's discard two clues from Jacqueline. I'm going to take that research materials away. Because this counts as spending. We'll place this on the bottom here. Ashcan might be able to pick that up again later. Let's grab a gate. And it's the City of the Great Race. And this is going at the bottom of the map here, in the Historical Society. We lose those two clues, unfortunately. We do have room for a monster. And it is... That's a good old shape. A warlock. That seems pretty nasty. It's a yellow bordered one and that means it's stationary so it's going to stay there guarding the historical society and the city of the great race. What next? Well we've got a gate opening there so Doom Track goes up by one. We've got six gates now. Remember our gate limit is eight. Clue appears at the Silver Twilight Lodge. And that's cool, that's by Peters. And if a clue gets placed here at this point, where there's an investigator, he can immediately take that clue. Great stuff. Now we have that monster movement, so our moons are going to follow the black arrows back to where they came from. So these guys are all heading north side. This one, that's a hexagon. Managed to get away from that vortex. Except now, if moons move again, there's nothing we can do about it. Finally then, we've got a new environment card. So, planetary alignment is off. Investigators receive one less movement point during the movement phase. And fast monsters move like normal monsters. Well, that's not very nice. So our planetary alignment now goes back to the discard. Alright, well we managed to avoid a nasty situation there using Jacqueline's ability. Jacqueline's pretty fine by name and nature. And she's going to kick things off next time. See you then.